Hello, this is Dr. Hannah Asil, and today we're talking about the first part of organic chemistry in the IGCSC syllabus, and we're going to be talking about how to name organic compounds. So first of all, you need to know what are organic compounds. Organic compounds are covalent compounds of carbon that were originally obtained from plants or animals. So all the compounds we're going to be talking about are compounds of carbon. They also have hydrogen. They could have things like oxygen in them. And they are called organic because they were originally obtained from plants or animals. Now, in order to study organic compounds, we have to divide them into different groups. So we have one type of organic compound called alkenes. We have another group called alkenes alcohols, carboxylic acids, all of these are different groups of organic compounds. Now, one type of organic compounds that you need to know is hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons are organic compounds made up of only carbon and hydrogen. Remember we said all the organic compounds have carbon and hydrogen. But they could have carbon and hydrogen and something else, carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, carbon and hydrogen and nitrogen. But if they have only carbon and hydrogen, then they are hydrocarbons. So alkenes are a group of hydrocarbons that we're going to be studying. Alkenes are also another group of hydrocarbons. So first, we're going to group them into hydrocarbons and other organic compounds. So hydrocarbons have only, and you have to mention only, carbon and hydrogen. Now, which ones are hydrocarbons? Alkenes and alkenes. Okay. Let's take a look at all alkenes, for example. So we said this is one group of organic compounds. And later on, we're not going to refer them as uh, groups. We're going to refer them as homologous series. So alkenes is one of the homologous series we're going to be talking about. So homologous series means a group of organic compounds. Okay, so all alkenes are one homologous series. So let's take a look at alkenes. First of all, all alkenes will have ene at the end of their name. So their names are ethene, propene, butene, pentene, and so on. Now, if we look at their molecular formulas, the molecular formula for ethene, for example, is C2H4. You count all the number of carbons and all the number of hydrogens. Propene is C3H6. Butene is C4H8. Pentene is C5H10. Can you see a certain trend in all of this? So it's C2H4. C3. H6, C4, H8, C5, H10. You would expect C6, H12, C7, H14. So what is happening here? There is a certain trend in all of this. They all differ from one member to the next by CH2. Each one has CH2 more than the previous one. And then... If you look at their formulas, remember that the C2H4 and so on, these are called molecular formula. But if I tell you, for example, what would C10 be? You can see that what is happening is the number of hydrogens is twice the number of carbons. So C4H8, C5H10, the number of hydrogens is twice the number of carbons. We say that the general formula, general formula is CnH2n. So general formula is different from molecular formula. If he tells me what is the molecular formula, it's C2H4 or C3H6, whatever. The total number of carbons and total number of hydrogens. But what is the general formula for this group of organic compounds or this series, homologous series? of organic compounds is that if I have a certain number for the carbons, the number of hydrogens is twice that number. So we say that the general formula for alkenes is CnH2n. 
then you can see that all of them have double bonds somewhere in their molecule. So we say that the functional group of alkenes is C double bond C. So functional group means something that is common to all the members of this group or all the members of this homologous series. So alkenes, all of them have what? They all have C double bond C. So we say that the functional group of alkenes is C double bond C. Then we say that they are unsaturated. We're going to call alkenes unsaturated. And if we say, of course, they are hydrocarbons. Remember, we said they have carbon and hydrogen only, so alkenes are hydrocarbons. And we say they are unsaturated because they have C double bond C. So if an organic molecule has C double bond C, then we, we call it unsaturated. Let's try again. Let's look at another group or another homologous series of organic compounds. So this group or this series is called alkanes. So anes means all their name will end with a. So we have one that has carbon. Remember that carbon is in group four. That means it has four electrons in its outer shell. That means it needs four more electrons, and that means each carbon must have a total of four bonds. Are we paying attention? When we draw any of these, each carbon must have a total of four bonds. So the first member of the alkanes has one carbon and four hydrogen. The second member is C2H6, C3H8, C4H10. C5H12. Again, you can see that they differ from one member to the next by CH2. But what is the general formula? Do you remember what is general formula? General formula shows if I have a certain number of carbons, how many hydrogen should it should I have? Well, obviously you see that in the general formula, if I have a certain number of carbons, the number of hydrogens is twice that number, and you add two. So if I start with CH4, now C2H what? C2H6. So two times two is four, plus two, six. C3H8, two times three is six, plus two, eight. So you're multiplying the number of carbons by two, and then add two. So we say that the general formula is CnH2n plus two. So if he says, for example, what is the molecular formula of methane? Can you see which one is methane? Methane is the one that has one carbon. I say the molecular formula is CH4. But what is the general formula? The general formula is CnH2n plus 2. And then if you look at all the members of alkanes, they all have what? They all have only single bonds between carbon and nothing else. They don't have any oxygens anywhere. They don't have anything else except that they have single bonds between carbon. So we say that the functional group of alkanes is C single bond C. Are we following the meaning of all of these terms? So the functional group is what is common to all of them. All alkanes have what? They all have C single bond C. That is the functional group of alkanes. Then we're going to say that they don't have any double bond. So we call them saturated. Remember, we said alkenes, we call them unsaturated because they have C double bond C. Now, alkenes have only single bonds between the carbons, so we call them saturated hydrocarbons. So, based on all that, what is meant by the word functional group? We said the functional group is atom or group of atoms that determine the chemical properties of a group of organic compounds. And we said when we talk about groups of organic compounds, we're not going to say groups, we're going to call them homologous series. So the functional group is the atom or group of atoms that determine the chemical properties of a homologous series. So the series we're going to be talking about or the groups that we're going to be talking about are alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, acids, we also may have esters. So alkanes, we said all alkanes have what? 
they all have single bond between the carbons, so its functional group is C, single bond C. All alkenes have what? They all have double bond between the carbons, so we say the functional group of alkenes is C, double bond C. Now, we're going to be talking also about a group called alcohols. Alcohols will have an OH somewhere. And acids will have this group, C, double bond O, single bond OH. So sometimes it is drawn out like that, or we just write it COOH. This is a homologous series or a group called carboxylic acid. So we said groups of organic compounds are called homologous series. And the homologous series are a group of organic compounds. Now, all the members of the same group or all the members of the same homologous series will have the same what? We said they will have the same general formula. So we talked about alkanes and we said the general formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus 2. Alkenes have a general formula CnH2n. Alcohols, all alcohols have a general formula very similar to the alkanes. Can you see alkane? Alkane is CnH2n plus 2. Alcohols will be CnH2n plus 1. So I'm removing one of the hydrogens and I'm putting an OH instead of it. Now, carboxylic acids also have a general formula. All carboxylic acids have a general formula CnH2n plus 1. So I'm removing one of the hydrogens of the alkane and I'm putting COOH instead of it. You need to memorize the general formula for each group or at least no alkanes and alkenes and the others you can deduce. So you can say, okay, alkanes are CnH2n plus 2. Yebel alcohols is plus 1 and put an OH. Carboxylic acids will be plus one and put a COOH. So all the members of the same homologous series will have the same general formula. We also said that all members of the homologous series will have the same functional group. So we said all alkenes have C single bond C. All alkenes have C double bond C. All alcohols have OH. All carboxylic acids have C double bond O, OH. And because they all have the same groups, they will all have the same chemical properties. So all alkanes will do the same types of reaction. All alkenes will do the same type of reaction and so on. When we talk about physical properties, there will be a trend in physical properties. So the boiling points will increase as the number of carbons increase. The, uh, they will change from gas to liquid to solid as the number of carbons increase. Okay, so let's take a look at what kind of question you could get. So he could say, explain what is meant by the term hydrocarbon. Do you remember what we said about hydrocarbon? What was a hydrocarbon? It's organic compound containing carbon and hydrogen only. You have to mention only. If you just say containing carbon and hydrogen, well, that could be any organic compound contains carbon and hydrogen. But if I'm talking about hydrocarbon, it contains only carbon and hydrogen, no other element, no oxygen, for example. Now, if he says state two features of a homologous series of compounds, okay, we said homologous series have the same what? The members of the same homologous series will have same general formula, same functional group, and we said if he wants a third one, we could say same chemical properties. So let's take a look at this question. He's saying which molecular structure shows hexene? Remember hexene, anything that ends with ene. We said what is the functional group of an alkene? An alkene must have what? Must have C double bond C. So that would be my hexene. Which of the following is an alkene? Again, how do I know? We talked about the general formula of alkenes. What was the general formula of alkenes? CnH2n. So I should have the number of hydrogens twice the number of carbons. But A is wrong. 
because A says I have CH2 and we said the carbon must have at least four bonds. So there is nothing called CH2. CH2 would be referred to as empirical formula. Do you remember what was empirical formula? Empirical formula is the simplest formula, but it's not the molecular formula of an alkene. So which of these is an alkene? You should realize that the number of hydrogen should be twice the number of carbons. Remember we said the general formula for alkenes was CnH2n. So the one that is an alkene would be the one that has C3H6. Hydrogen twice the number of carbons. What about this question? The structures of three compounds are shown. Why do these substances all belong to the same homologous series? We said if something belongs to the same homologous series, they should have the same what? We did not say they contain even number of carbon atoms. That's not why. They all contain the same functional group. Remember that we said, for example, all of these would be regarded as alkenes now why do we say they are alkenes because they all have double bond between carbon so the fact that they are all hydrocarbons doesn't mean that they belong to the same homologous series the fact that they're all saturated does not mean they belong to the same homologous series remember molecules will belong to the same homologous series if they have the same functional group the diagram shows the first four members of a homologous series. What is the difference in molecular formula between one member and the next? Remember, we said going from CH4, C2H6, C3H8, what is the difference between them? Is that they are increasing by CH2. We have a CH2 increase from one member to the next. Okay, so how do we name organic compounds? What we're supposed to do is we should count the number of carbons in the chain because the number of carbons determines what the name would be. So, for example, if I find that my molecule has only one carbon, its name must start with meth. Two carbons, its name should start with eth. Three carbons, prop. Four carbons, but. Five carbons, pent. So, meth, eth. Prop, but, pent. Once we have decided how many carbons we have, then we need to determine the functional group. Because we said if it has only single bond, then it's an alkene. So that means that its name will end with ane. So methane, ethane, propane, if it has only single bonds. If I can see a double bond somewhere, and usually you just have one of them double bond and the others are single, then the name must end with E. So I can say E, C, Pro, P, Butene, Pentene. If it has an OH, then it's an alcohol. So its name will end with all. Ethanol, Propanol, Butanol, and so on. And if it has this group, which belongs to the carboxylic acids, if I have at one end C double bond O, OH, then it is a carboxylic acid. So its name should end with something O weak acid, metha no weak acid, etha no weak acid, propa no weak acid, and so on. And then we see anything that is branching. So I have branches on the compound and we will explain this kind of name so let's take a look at these names of these alcohols we said alcohols should have an oh somewhere so when i have molecules with oh that means it's an alcohol and we said if it's an alcohol its name will end with what with all so it is something all now that first one has one carbon remember we said one carbon the name will start with meth so one carbon is meth it is an alcohol because i can see an oh so the name of that compound is methano now this second carbon has two a uh, second molecule has two carbons and we said two carbons the name should start with do you remember two carbons f one carbon meth two carbons f this is an alcohol 
So its name is ethano. Now, what about that third corp, uh, compound? Well, it has three carbons, and we said three carbons' name should start with prop. And this is an alcohol, so we should say propanol. But then I have different choices of where the OH should be, because here the OH is on one end, or I could put the OH in the middle. So I need to identify the OH is on which carbon. For ethanol or methanol, it doesn't make a difference. But for propanol, where is my OH? My OH is on one end. So is it on carbon number one or on carbon number three? Remember, I can count from the right, then it's carbon number one, or I can count from the left, then it's carbon number three. And we choose to count from the side that will give the lower number. So the name of that compound is propane 1 all to indicate that the OH is on carbon number 1. Remember that molecules are three-dimensional. You can turn them around. So 1 propanol would be the same as 3 propanol. And we choose the lower number. Now what about that one at the bottom? Well, it has four carbons, so we said four carbons should be but. Again, the OH is on one end, so we will count from the side that will give the lower number. So we're going to regard that carbon that carries the OH as carbon number one, not as carbon number four. So this is called butane one all. What about this one? This one also is four carbons, so it is but something. It has an OH, so it has an all. Now, the OH is on which carbon? If I start counting from the right, it's on carbon number three. But if I count from the left, it's on carbon number two. And we said we count from the side that gives the lower number. So this is actually butane two all. Are we following? Again. This is how we name carboxylic acids. We said all acids must have C, double bond O, single bond OH. Now, if it has one carbon, it is methanoic acid. Two carbons, ethanoic acid. Three carbons, propanoic acid, and so on. Remember that the acid has to be on one end of the chain. You cannot put the C double bond OH in the middle or the carbon will have five bonds. So the acid group is always on one end of the chain. So let's try naming these compounds. So we said, how am I going to name this in order to name it? I need to see how many carbons. And then is it an alkene, alkene, alcohol, or acid? So this has how many carbons? It has two carbons. So its name must start with F. So it is F something. Okay, what does it have from that lower box? It has an OH. OH is alcohol, so its name should end with all. So this is eta. No, I do not need to specify the OH is on which carbon because it doesn't make a difference. Whether it's on this carbon on one end or on the other end, it's the same. Ethanol, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, let's try naming this. Again, in order to name it, what should I do? How many carbons? Well, this has four carbons, so the name must start with but. Now, what does it have? Single bond, double bond, OH, C double bond, OH. It has a double bond, so it is an in. And the double bond is after which carbon? One. If we count from the left, it's on carbon number one. If we count from the right, it's on carbon number three. So we count from the side that gives the lower number. So this is called but one. In. Can you see the name? Let's try this one. This one has two carbons, so it's F. What does it have? It has only single bond, nothing else. Then it is an alkane. What about this one? It has how many carbons? One. So the name must start with meth something. Now, it has what from the functional groups? It has the C double bond OH. Remember, it doesn't just have OH alone. It has C double bond O and OH. So it's an acid, not an alcohol. Remember, an alcohol will have only OH. 
But if it has C, double bond O, OH, then this is an acid, then its name would be methanoic acid. Let's try again. Let's name this. How many carbons? I have four, so the name must start with but. Now, what is it? In, in, all, oic acid. It has only single bonds, so it is an alkane, so the name is butane. What about this one? How many carbons? Two. So it's F something. What does it have? It has a double bond. So this is ethene. This one, one carbon. So the name must start with meth. What does it have? Which functional group can you see? The OH, it's an alcohol. So this is methanol. Again, how many carbons? Two carbons, this is an F. Which functional group? C, double bond O, OH. This is an acid, so its name is ethanoic acid. Please practice drawing all of these. This question says, which structure is correctly named? So, let's take a look at this. He says, A is called ethanoic acid. Is that correct? F means how many carbons? F means two carbons, but A has three carbons, so it's not ethanoic acid, it's propanoic acid. What about B? B, he says, is E thin. Well, F has two carbons, we agree. But in, which one is in? The in must have a double bond, so this is actually not ethene, it is ethane. It's an alkane because it has only single bonds. What about C? C has an OH, so it is an alcohol. It has two carbons, so actually that is the correct name, ethanol. What about D? D has three carbons, so that is prop, that's correct. But then he says it is pro, pain, this is not pro, pain, because it has a double bond, so it should be pro. Peen. Are we following? Okay. This question says which structure is incorrect. Remember that we said each carbon cannot have more than four bonds. So carbon having four bonds or four lines coming out of it, that is correct. But if you look at C, can you see C? C has a double bond. So each carbon has two bonds with the next carbon, and he's giving it an extra three hydrogens. That means the carbon has five bonds. That is wrong. If we have a double bond, then we should have only two hydrogens on each carbon to have a total of four bonds for each carbon. Okay, so sometimes he will give you the structure and tell you to name it, and sometimes he will give you the name and tell you to draw it. So if he says, draw the structural formula of each of the following, show all the bonds. How do we draw ethanoic acid? First, how many carbons? F is 2. O weak acid means what? Means it has C, double bond O, single bond OH. Can you see how we drew that? What if I'm trying to draw ethanol? Again, two carbons. But all means I have an OH somewhere, and then I complete all the carbons so that each carbon does not have a to more than four bonds. We must have a total of four bonds. Notice that the C double bond O of the acid, C double bond O, OH, you cannot put an extra hydrogen on that because that carbon already has four bonds. Okay. We have different types of formula. So if he says draw displayed formula of something, let us say ethanol. Displayed formula is what we have been drawing. Displayed formula shows the arrangement of all the atoms in the molecule. But sometimes he will say structural formula. So structural formula, you collect all the number of hydrogens for each carbon. So for example, in ethanol. The first carbon is bonded to three hydrogens. The second carbon is bonded to two hydrogens and an OH. This is called a structural formula.
or he could say write a molecular formula and the molecular formula is what we have been writing normally in chemical calculations so this is the total number of carbons total number of hydrogens and oxygen for example and so on. okay you should know the meaning of isomers you should know that isomers are two or more compounds having the same molecular formula but different displayed formula now what does that mean if he says draw isomers of propanol for example now what is propanol how many carbons three carbons all means it has an oh now the question is where is the oh so i can draw it once with the oh on one end and remember whether it's on one end on this side or one end from the other side that is the same compound or I can draw the OH in the middle. So these two molecules have the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogen, same number of oxygen. So they have the same molecular formula, but they have different displayed formula. So one OH is on one end, the other has the OH in the middle. What if I want to name these? When we have the OH on one end, we said this is propane one all. Remember, we said we count from the side that gives the lower number. So whether the OH is on this end or on the other end, it is called propane one all. Now, when the OH is in the middle, this is called propane two all. Now, if I'm supposed to write the structural formula, remember we said what is the structural formula? It is the C has three hydrogens. The other C has two hydrogens. The third C has two hydrogens and an OH. This one, this is how you write the structural formula if you have something in the middle. So the OH is in the middle. It's supposed to be on the C. But the C has two things. The C has H and OH in the middle. So this is how we draw the structural or we write the structural formula of propane 2 or What if he says write or draw the structure of isomers of butene. So we're trying to draw isomers of butene. So you ask yourself, but is how many carbons? But is four carbons. Now, what does the en mean? The en means I must have a double bond. But the question is, where is the double bond? Is it on one end, whether it's here or on the other end? Or is it in the middle? So these are the two isomers of butene. Remember that one end or the other are the same molecule. So once you draw the functional group or you write the functional group on one end and once in the middle. Now, how are we going to name these? The one that has the double bond on one end is but one in. The one that has double bond in the middle after carbon number two would be called but two in. Then how do we draw the structural formula how do we write the structural formula remember the structural formula means each carbon and the total number of hydrogens now we put the double bond for example in but one in after the first carbon for but two in we have the first carbon has three hydrogens and then the second carbon has a ch and then a double bond so these are the structural formula of these isomers what if he's saying draw isomers of butane? What is butane? But is four carbons. Ane meets an alkane. So this is butane. But he's telling me to draw isomers of butane. Now I don't have a double bond to put in different places. I don't have an OH to put in different places. So how am I going to draw isomers of an alkane? You change the chain length. Instead of having all the four carbons after each other like this, I can put three carbons after each other, and then the fourth, I put it on the one in the middle. So we call that a branch. The CH3 there is a branch on the three carbons. Or if I am supposed to write the structural formula of these, then the structural formula of that would be CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, while the other one, because it has a branch, remember we said the branch will be between brackets. What do we name them? 
This is butane. Now, what is the name of that other one? That other one has three carbons in the chain. So this is actually propane. And then I have a CH3 on carbon number two. The CH3 group is called a methyl group. So if I have a CH3 somewhere, we call that a methyl group. It is on carbon number two. So this is two methyl propane. Are we paying attention? Okay, what if he says draw isomers of pentane? Again, pentane is an alkane. It has five carbons. So how can I draw its isomer? Either all the five carbons are in one chain or four carbons and one of them is a branch or three carbons and two of them are branches. Can you see what I drew? Now, what would be their structural formula? The first one has all the carbons and hydrogens after each other. Pay attention to the number of hydrogens that are attached to each carbon. This one has a branch, so we put that between brackets. This one has two branches, we put that between brackets. So these are isomers of pentane. The first chain is pentane. What about the second one on the right? What is it called? Remember, you have the chain is four carbons. So this is something butane. I have the methane on which carbon or the methyl group on which carbon. I have it on the second carbon. So this is two methyl butane. Now, what about this one? This one will be, I have on carbon number two, I have one methyl. And on the same carbon, I have another methyl. So I have two methyl groups. So we call that dimethyl. And each of them is on carbon number two. So this is 2,2. Two. Dimethyl propane. Can you see what we did? The chain has three carbons. So it's propane. But I have two methyl groups as branches or substituents on these propane. So both of them are on carbon number two, so we say two, two, dimethyl propane. Okay, what about cyclic compounds? If we say we want to draw a cyclobutane, what does cyclo mean? Cyclo means it's a cyclic. Bute means four carbon. Ain means I have only single bonds. If he says draw cyclobutane, this is what we call cyclobutane, in which all the carbons are joined together and each carbon still has to have a total of four bonds. Okay, what about this? He says many organic compounds which contain a halogen are called chloro something, bromo something, iodo something. So remember, if I have a chlorine on my compound, it is chloro something. So this, for example, is one chloropropane. So if he says draw the structure of an isomer of that, we said isomer means they, it will have the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, same number of chlorines, but drawn in a different way. So how can I draw this in a different way? Well, he has the chlorine on one end. I can put it so that the chlorine is on the middle. Now, what would this be called? This would be called 2-chloropropane. It has three carbons, so it's a prop. Single bonds, propane. It has a chlorine atom on carbon number two, so we say this is 2-chloropropane. Okay, what about if he says, what does each of the following tell you about the structure of dibromoethane? If I have dibromoethane, what does that look like? F is two carbons. Ain means I have single bond between the carbons. Dibromo means I have two bromines. So dibromo means I have two bromine atoms. F means I have two carbon atoms. Ain means it's an alkane, so it has only C single bond C. Now, if I want to name that compound, what would be the name of that compound? We said this is two carbons, F. Single bond between the carbons, it's an ain, ethane. 
Now, I have two bromines, and we said when I have two of something, it is called di something. So the other one was dimethyl. This one is dibromo. Now, the bromines here are on which carbon? One of them is on carbon number one, and the other is on carbon number two. So this is called 1,2-dibromoethane. Are we okay? Okay, that's the end of this part of naming the compounds. Um, we will follow with other videos about organic chemistry. Thank you for listening.